go. Man, that's so cool. I, I think um, I think that's so um, important, and it's it's a lesson that I need to take on as well because so much of those teachings talk about how it's only awareness is the only step is, is, is not the only step. The other step is obviously integration and actually um, cultivating the connection between the mind and body based on the work you do um, is that integration phase. It's like, yes, I understand that I should be more in my heart and I should, you know, Wu Wei, you know, try not to force things, but how do I actually do it? It's like, well, you're actually taking yourself and taking your clients and things through that actual process. So I, I, I love the background, man. Um, Talk to me now more about kind of the work you do and, you know, how, how that's different to, I suppose, just general movement. Um, so what I've, what I've kind of realized is that um, what holds people back is probably less so their lack of knowledge, although that is important, like knowledge of training, knowledge of movement, it's definitely important. It's essential. But, often um, a lot more of what's holding them back that they don't realize is, is that they're just, they're thinking they should do something that they don't really want to do. Or they're thinking that they need to, to move or, or train in a particular way. Cause that's like how you do it properly. Or like uh, there are all these kind of brands, brands of movement. And because I identify that searching and that like pigeonholing in myself, um, it's, it's kind of the natural thing for me to try to help people with that and to say, you realize that the most important thing is you, your body, your mind, how you feel. This knowledge is all here. You should definitely learn, but you don't have to choose. Like there's no, there's no wrong or right way provided you're enjoying this and you're kind of doing what you want and you're, you're looking after your body and progressing in a positive direction. So uh, I think now my coaching has become much more about um, integrating aspects of mindfulness or aspects of yoga with more modern um, or perhaps not modern, perhaps just more personalized strength training or mobility training. And it's seeing them not as separate, um, but as actually like one practice where you can, you might be doing your chin ups, for example, like I've been filming this in my story. I've been doing this one on chin program and I'm like doing my chin ups and thinking or inquiring into how does this feel right now? Like, how am I approaching this? Um, what association with these chin ups am I cultivating by having this mindset and doing this exercise? Like, why am I doing it? Mm. And it's not like I have to answer all those questions. It's just an inquiry. Um, and this idea kind of the practitioner who I've seen do it really well and who I've kind of adopted this from is Devin Kelly. I don't know if you've heard of him. He's, he's no. like working out of, so he's uh, he used to be a yoga teacher. He's now sort of just into strength mobility. He's an absolute beast, very, very interested in psychology and philosophy. And he's kind of combined the two. So it's this wow. it's using the physical as a, as a mirror for the mental. Um, wow. And I guess you could say it's kind of like yoga if yoga didn't mean getting on a mat and speaking Sanskrit words and <laughs> holding particular shapes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, I, I love that. Um, I think intention is massive. Um, yeah, so so the why people are doing it. Um, you mentioned Alan Watts before. One, one of my favorite things that he says, I, I literally try to remind myself of this like daily, is... Um, he says, I'll try to do the accent. He goes, people are always asking me, you know, um, you know, is it necessary? Is it necessary to meditate? Why do this? Why do that? You know? And his idea behind that is like, well, it depends on what you want in life. Like if it's, if you're driving to New York, it's necessary to take the highway. 